These uh, F and Eppendorfs seem to always be breaking down. This one here has, if, if um, yours has a similar problem of when you push the buttons, you don't get that, this is what it should sound like, very kind of deep growl. And if, if yours, when you push the buttons, sounds more like this, where it just sounds like low volume whir, then that means that the pump is disconnected from the motor in, inside. And also that you'll notice that it's not working because there's no vacuum or, or pressure. First step to fixing a broken Eppendorf Easy Pet is to remove the battery compartment, which is not always as easy as it appears. So you can use a screwdriver to help pry open the battery compartment because it's pretty hard to take off with your hands. Then these rechargeable batteries in here, the easiest way to get them out is to tap in your hand, get them out one at a time. And then you'll find on the inside of the battery compartment these four screws. And these screws are torque screws. They are T6 Torx. So you can buy from Home Depot, Husky brand, screwdriver, which has several Torx bits in it. And these, this screwdriver is $5. It'll allow you to uh, undo these screws. So it's pretty easy. You just remove these screws. And these are not the only screws that need to be removed. There's also some under the head here. So to remove the nozzle, you push down on this button right here and then turn counterclockwise and pull out the nozzle. Set that aside. And then you'll find there's two more screws in here that need to be undone. Same size, Torx T6. Then you can lift the top up and pull back. So the motion is lift up and then pull back to remove this top. And remove the screw. Now you can see you can have a little bit of access to the motor. And you can see how this piece of the the piston rod of the pump is not on fully seated on the bearing. This is the let's see. This is the bearing here and this is the the piston rod and it's loose, just moving around. So when you push well, the batteries out, you can't see it, but when you push the button, the pump doesn't work. So you got, we have to disassemble the whole thing to get in there. And here you can see it better where when the pump is rotating the piston is the piston is not moving with it so that's the that's the reason that it's not working what has happened here is that the um, the bearing and little counterweight on the motor shaft has slipped forward on the shaft and the piston rod on the pump has slipped off so when when the pump turn when the motor turns the nothing happens the pump does not turn this is the good one you can see on the good one how um the the part that's attached to the shaft the motor shaft is close to the motor and there's some some amount of shaft sticking out right here the bad one it's slipped down and there's less shaft sticking out and the piston rod has slipped off the easy solution to fix this problem is to push the piston rod from the pump back onto the bearing and then slide back the whole um, assembly on the motor shaft until it pops back near the motor. Now you see that um, oops, it slides along easily and I don't know if it'll, how well it will stay over time. It might may be that putting a little bit of super glue right here will prevent it from sliding down the shaft again, but it's a pretty polished shaft, so that'd be pretty, that'd be difficult. It looks like a design flaw on their part of just pressing it on there if it ends up slipping down like that. 
you also want to make sure that this piston shaft is perpendicular to the pump itself. This is the pump down here, and the piston shaft needs to be perpendicular. If the piston shaft shaft is is off axis, and it's going to want to wander on that bearing. So right now, this is a good position where you have you have about four millimeters or so of shaft sticking out, and the um, piston rod for the pump is seated close to the end of the motor and the counterweight is right next to it. That's the proper position. While it's open, it's a good thing to clean off these contacts here, right here and here, because it's a common point of corrosion and failure mode that the buttons don't work well anymore. Put the handle back on. To reassemble, flip it over. If the, these screws stayed in place, if your screws fall out, put the screws back in and you can screw the handle. Screw. Then you're going to take this top that you removed earlier, slide the back on first, then push the front down. Make sure it's well seated. These screws stayed in the place here, so it's pretty easy to put them back in. And then you can put the batteries back in. Make sure that you look at the polarity in here. This small tip goes um, on the left side for the bottom one, on the right side for the middle one, then on the left side again for the top one, and put the battery compartment back on, and check to see if it works. You can immediately check to see if there's vacuum or pressure just by putting a finger here.